the physical book will be out by the end of the month. Um, and you may have seen Ken Cousins' keynote yesterday, but uh, all, all, of, um, all the royalties are going to the Groovy community, specifically to the great ladies. So if you're buying this book, you're also supporting the Groovy community as well. So buy the book, not just to support the Groovy community, but you'll learn Rat Pack in Groovy. And it's also a great book. All right, let's get started. Uh, let me start by tweeting. There we go. So if you follow me on Twitter, you can open this up. And let's get started. So I just want to focus on, um, I just want to do some housekeeping. So these, these are my notes. They're very detailed. It's quite long. Everything's here, everything's spelled out, everything's annotated. Uh, this will take you from start to finish in writing a JSON REST API. And for offline reading, I have this available in PDF format as well. Um, this is the link to Dan Woods' uh, Learning Rat Pack book. Again, it's, it's finalized. It's going to production. Uh, we also have a Slack channel. So if you come to slacksignup.ratpack.io, um, you can come in and ask all your Rathac questions that you may have. And I think that's good enough for now. So let's talk about Rathac. What is Rathac? How many of you have heard of Rathac before today? Okay, that's, that's really great. How many of you have done a Hello World or used it? Okay. How many of you have Rathac applications in production today? Okay, that's pretty good. So let's start out with about half, or actually most of the room has heard of Rat Pack. Half the room has done a Hello World, and half of that has gone to production. So uh, Rat Pack is a web framework. It's a set of libraries. Um, it's quite different from maybe the other web frameworks that you're used to working with. It's not full stack. It's not built on top of servlets. It's asynchronous and non-blocking from the ground up. The, uh, and it's also fully reactive, meaning it implements the reactive streams API and passes the test compatibility kits. Um, but you know, like you know, hearing about, oh, Rat Pack is non-blocking, it's asynchronous, reactive, blah, blah, blah. You hear all these buzzwords. But really what I want to focus on is your workflow on working with Rat Pack. I want to show you today how easy it is to write a REST endpoint. And I want to show you that Rat Pack really is for rapid prototyping as well as evolving your code base into something that's maintainable and can support a larger code base in the future. So let's get started. <clears throat> we have a clean empty directory. Uh, we'll start by creating a Groovy script. I'm a, I'm a VI guy, so please don't, uh, don't hit on me if you're an Emacs user. Um, so it, it doesn't have to be called ratpack.groovy. It can be anything. We'll start by grabbing our, um, grabbing our artifact here. So the group is io.ratpack. The artifact that we care about is ratpack groovy. And current stable version as of today in June 3rd is 1.3.3. Uh, we only really need one import, and we're going to be importing a static method. I kind of like how that import statement looks. Import static, rat pack, groovy, groovy, rat pack. How, <laughs> it's kind of, uh, kind of sounds like a song. But rat pack is the entryway to building your application. So using the static method, um, you can really build a you can utilize Rat Pack's DSL in describing what the server should look like and how it should be responding to HTTP requests. So we start by invoking the handlers method. We pass it an action, which is coerced uh, from this closure. And within here, we're simply going to bind a handler to a get HTTP get request on the root path. And from here, we're just going to Render hi verden. I don't know how, if that's okay in Danish, but this is our app. This is it. 
You can fit this app in a tweet, not that that means anything, but this is all it takes to get started in writing uh, Rat Pack applications. It's the, there's almost no commitment to sticking with Rat Pack if you decide it's not for you. So it's very low effort, and just to show that this application does indeed work, we'll run the application. So you can see Rat Pack started up very quickly, and we can just make sure that we get a response. There we go. So pretty easy, huh? There's some cool things that you can do with Rat Pack as well. So while Groovy is still running our script, what I'm going to do is modify our script so that we can start to see some changes here. So instead of saying, hey, Fedin, we're going to say, hey, GreyConf, you. And when I save this file, uh, we can actually see that this change took place in real time. So now when we curl against localhost, we get, hey, GreyConf, you. Uh, as you can see, uh, you can mod make modifications to Rat Pack while your server is running, so you get instant feedback. This is so important when it comes to prototyping because you want to get instant feedback and see what kind of shape your application should be taking. Um, so let's do this. So defining handlers which really respond to a combination of HTTP methods and paths. Um, you can do things like this. You can say, we can define an endpoint for GreyConf. And here we can specifically <coughs> you know, we can do something like this, and then we have a new endpoint for that. You can also do things like path binding. So uh, using this kind of syntax, we can capture portions of a path, and we can extract that and send that back to the user. Using some nice groovy string interpolation, we still have our old endpoint. And let's say we want to say hi to Greech. There we go, you can say hello, Greech. So as you're kind of poking around and getting a feel for what your application should look like, um, you can kind of do this in a very low effort kind of way and get immediate feedback to, to keep your um, cadence going and to figure out where you want to go with this. So as your, ap as your application starts to grow, um, you will want to figure out how to migrate things away. As you can tell, your Rat Pack Groovy script can probably start taking off very quickly. Uh, so let's convert this script into a uh, Gradle project. So we'll just start by creating a build file. I don't know how many of you use Maven, but um, I can't produce a POM XML from memory, but I can certainly create a build Gradle file from memory, and it's as easy as doing this. So we're applying the Rat Pack Groovy Gradle plugin, which is available in the Gradle plugin portal. I am making use of the new uh, plugins DSL, which is an incubating feature, which means it can change and you're not allowed to complain about it. So, uh, but it does make life better. Uh, yeah, that's right. Repositories. We're just going to pull everything from JSONer, and we're going to prepare our dependencies block. Okay, that's all it takes. <laughs> this is this is migrating your application to Gradle. Uh, let's go ahead and create our app, um, directory structure. <clears throat> so f typically, um, for Groovy Rat Pack applications, you'll put your templates, your configuration, your static assets, things like this under source rat pack. You don't have to, uh, but by default, it will look in this location. Uh, we'll also go ahead and create 
all the regular stuff. So please forgive me, I'm using Windows. Um, but if we take a look at what our project structure looks like, there's really not much going on, right? We have our build Gradle file, we have our Rat Pack Groovy that we decide we liked, and we have our typical Maven project layout. So, so let's migrate our Rat Pack, or let's just move it actually to the Rat Pack directory. And the only modification that we have to make here is just remove this. And now you have a Gradle project. So let's go ahead and create our wrapper scripts for this. So using Gradle wrapper is, um, is the best practice. Reason being, you have these nice binaries that get produced, Gradle W for Unix, Linux, Mac users, and batch files for your Windows coworkers, maybe someone like me, or maybe you're forced to work on Windows. Um, just an important note here, when you do generate the wrapper scripts, you wanna make sure that you change permissions on this because you'll get yelled at. <laughs> or your CI server won't, uh, won't be able to execute this. So, there we go. Um, so how do we run this application? You just do Gradle W run, and we get the same thing. Your application's up and running. And just to show that this is not an illusion, there we go. Um, so the Rat Pack Gradle plugin uh, provides a lot of nice things, one of them being the hook into the continuous mode. Uh, so what happens is if you pass in dash dash continuous or dash t, dash t is a short form of this, what Gradle does is, um, oh, by the way, you have to be using Java 7 or greater, but Rat Pack requires Java 8, so you can definitely use this. And what ends up happening here is uh, Gradle will start watching your source code as well as your resources, and if anything changes, it will re-execute the task that's currently running. Um, so as an example, if we go back and modify our, nope. so if we go back and modify our script and get rid of this endpoint, everything kicks off and we can now see that, we can see that now that after getting rid of that uh, endpoint, we don't have it anymore. Actually, let's get rid, of the, get rid of the other one as well. So if we try to curl against GreyConf, we should get a 404, which we do. And uh, yeah, so you get live reload, instant feedback, and um, both using Groovy scripts and using Gradle. So let's talk about some code. I'll start by generating my uh, IDE files. I prefer going this way because within, within the Gradle build script, you can actually um, tell Gradle how to create your project files, your module settings, as well as your workspace settings. And this is quite nice. Um, This is nice because uh, you can come in and set things like, you know, set your default VCS, you can come in and set target language, all this kind of stuff. So here's our application that we made. You can also just right click and run this script and it'll just work. Uh, you won't get the automatic reloading if you do it through IntelliJ, but I think we have a ticket open for enabling this. Yeah, so there we go. Okay, so moving on. <clears throat> uh, this part I'm going to fast forward just a little bit. Yeah. So by the way, this is, this is the old way of doing plugin application. Um, we're not really using a 
plug-in here per se. We're just bringing in additional libraries into our class path so that we can apply them while we're executing our tasks. Uh. So what have we done? Uh, we're just going to be using H2 for persistence. We're using Juke as a way of communicating with our data store. I like Juke. You can use Groovy SQL, you can use Hibernate, you can use anything you'd like. And in addition, we're pulling in a dependency from a Rat Pack module. We maintain this module in the code base and we produce this. This is equivalent to doing this. So, I prefer doing it like this, the reason being you don't have to keep these versions in sync. And where do you get this version information? It comes from here, from this plugin. So as long as you're using the Ratpack Gradle plugin, you can make use of this Ratpack dependency method here and just name the module that you need. Let's move this down a little bit. Okay, so let's talk about what I've done here. We've just created a task for generating the Juke um, classes here. And there's not really much going on. We need this, of course, because your coworkers may be on Windows like me. Um, we're just going to execute a SQL script. In reality, you'd probably use something like a, like a migration library, maybe Flyway or Liquivase or something like this. But for us, just getting started, we're going to be executing just a simple SQL script that I'll create in a second. Um, we're, just telling, we're just telling the API, um, the Fluent API here about how to connect and where we want to place our generated files and name the package that we want to put it in. So let's just create our schema real quick. So these are these are just details, but each of our each of our um, to dos in our database are just going to have an ID, uh, auto auto incrementing ID, a title which I don't agree with the name, but it's basically what is your to do. Um, and since the application allows you to do ordering, uh, you can do that. And we just have a flag here to determine whether or not you are done with the task. So these are all implementation details for the API that we'd like to implement. So once that's ready, you just come back and execute the task that we made. And it worked. So what do we have? We have all these classes that were generated. Uh, the one that I'd like to bring your attention to is this to-do. So this to-do represents the table that we have. If you look in here, you can see that we have ID, title, order, completed, and we can, use now, we can now use Juke to query against this database. Um, since these libraries don't exist yet, I'm just going to synchronize it. Yeah, so just regenerating the files is good enough. Yep, now IntelliJ is happy. Okay, so Rat Pack does not have a plugin architecture per se. Um, in fact, the Rat Pack project itself looks a bit like this. Uh, that may be hard to see. Let's actually go to the Rat Pack project. So in our Rat Pack project, we have a whole bunch of modules here. Uh, Groovy, as an example, relies on core, and Gradle is where we contain our Gradle plugin. If you need any kind of extended functionality, you can get it through here. And this is kind of the Rat Pack way of thinking is that you just uh, 
pull in what you need. So if you're not building any kind of user-facing stuff, you don't need any kind of sessions. If you don't need security, you don't need security. If you want, um, as an example, we're using Hikari, which is a, it's a very fast JD, uh, connection pooling library. Uh, we can see we have support for things like juice, testing, handlebars. There's a lot to discover in here, and you can just come in and, and take a look later. Great, so we don't have plugins, but we support, uh, we support bringing in functionality through modules. And in this case, in Ratpack, we're using Juice, but you're not, you don't have to use Juice. You can just simply export a jar file that contains everything you need and bring it in. Uh, the way you do that is through this bindings method that's available in the DSL. Uh, this is another thing I want to bring to your attention. There, um, in light of recent events, mainly about uh, you know, Gradle announcing that they're moving to Kotlin, um, I want to show you that you can get nice IDE help within Ratpack. This is because uh, the DSL was designed in such a great way by Luke. Luke, is the, um, Luke Daly is the project lead, and he really knows what he's doing. So when you're in here, and it kind of feels like magic. You see rat pack and then some curly braces and then bindings and some curly braces. You may say, well, how am I supposed to know where this comes from? Control space is your friend and you get access to everything in here. Even when you're within the closures, you can figure out what you need to do here. So for bindings, as an example, uh, we're going to bring in a module and you get nice ID help. Um, so we're going to be bringing in the Hikari module I really hate how this does that. And we need to configure it. We need to tell it how to connect to our database and what it should be doing. So. I'm just going to copy it from here. Why not? Okay, so what we've done is we've brought in the Hikari module, which is very fast um, Java connection pooling. We've told it that we want to use H2 and that it should connect to this URL. So if everything works well, it should just start up without a problem. Okay, there doesn't seem to be any problems, and just to make sure that we can still serve requests. Great, okay. So let's start building our REST endpoint. We're going to be implementing uh, our get endpoint. So what I didn't tell you is that within bindings, when you bring in this module, um, what Ratpack does is it uses all the information from Juice, which is made available in the Sakari module. So we have some singletons, we have some components here, and it adds it to the registry. So a registry you can think of as a map, and it's the way that you communi communicate between handlers, and a handler is this piece of code here. Um, processing in Ratpack is, is done from a handler, so when you get an incoming request, it starts executing on what's called a handler chain, and a chain is just a graph of handlers. So at any point, you can either return a response like this. If you're not going to do this, you can delegate to the next chain in the handler. Um, and all communication is done through a context between handlers. 
So we see that we have a data source that's made available. And we can just call get from Yeah, we call get here. So this get is different from this get, but again, the ID helps you out here because we have nice, um, the DSL was written in such a way that you get ID help here. So this is just some juke stuff here. So what we're going to do is, just for now, grab everything from the to-do into a list of maps and send this back out to the user. Uh, by the way, we have Jackson support for rendering JSON. So it'll take your Groovy or Java objects and serialize them correctly and set content header and all that kind of stuff. So let's just make sure that this works. Wow, that's exciting. So we have an empty JSON array. This is pretty much a useless uh, API so far. So let's make it more exciting and write an endpoint to populate it. So as you can tell, uh, we, have, we have methods here that correspond to HTTP methods. Um, and we'll be providing a post endpoint now. So it's pretty much all the same stuff. Um, and for, of course, in posting, we need to take some input here. And Ratpack's got some great data binding, and that's done through the parsing framework. So in Ratpack, when you're either parsing incoming input or rendering output, you can provide parsers or renderers that enable you to um, simply call render or parse and give it the object, and it'll take care of rendering details for you. That's exactly what this Jackson JSON thing does. So in our case, we'd like to parse the incoming, um, the incoming thing, and we'll just turn it into a map. And we can make use of type token to preserve preserve our type. Um, and there is a little bit of a detail here. Uh, Ratpack is non-blocking and asynchronous, which means any kind of I.O. bound work is non-blocking and asynchronous as well. Parsing input is I.O., and this is done through a non-blocking way. So if you take a look here, you can see that parse returns a promise. So when the parsing does finish, um, what we'd like to do is persist this to, to the database. Okay, so once we create the record, uh, we need to store it into the database. And here's where the tricky part comes in. Storing this to the database, we don't have any async drivers for JDBC, so all these calls are blocking. If you issue a blocking call, it's going to stop this current thread, which could be spending its time processing other requests. So the way to kind of tie this in and make sure that you keep that request thread free and only doing CPU bound work, we make use of something called blocking map here. Um, so we, we have two variants here. There's blocking map and blocking op. Um, and these really, these really come down to um, if you care about the return type. So in blocking map, you get back a type. But in blocking operation, it returns 
it returns a promise, but really what you end up doing is uh, getting an operation back here. So the difference between an operation and a promise, they both represent asynchronous units of work. Operation does not have any kind of return type. You just call it and nothing comes back. In a promise, however, it is typed and you get the value back out from there. Typically, when you're working in an asynchronous um, kind of processing pipeline like this, with if you're using operations, the value that was mapped previously gets passed forward. So in this case, in this case, since we're creating the record here, uh, and this this is not um, this is not I/O bound, so we can do that here. Uh, but the blocking operation here is to store. And we want to provide another blocking operation, which is to refresh the record. So Juke provides the ability to, Juke has this kind of active record ability. So we can take a record, make some modifications from it, and restore it from the database. So, and this is what I meant. So when we're mapping it here, we're getting, an, uh, getting a record object here. And when we're performing the operation, we're given this record. Um, but since we don't return anything, the record is also passed on to the next operation. So once this is all done, uh, we finally want to render this back out to the user. And we can do something like this. So we're just going to post a JSON payload here, and hopefully this should get persisted. This is not going to work, though. You'll get a 405. And you may say, what is going on here? And you'll say, OK, I have a get endpoint, and I have a post endpoint, so what's the problem? The problem is, in Rat Pack, uh, we don't have a routing table. So you cannot look up ahead and see all the possible method handlers that we have for a given path. So when you're coming into this chain, Ratpack actually grabs this guy, because this is the first matching path that we have for root, and sees that we only provide a get handler. So it says, I found the handler, and it's not matching, so we're going to render a 405 immediately. You say, oh, well, that's kind of horrible. <laughs> what I'd like to do, though, is bind a handler that no matter what method it is, for a given path, I want to apply the following logic. So this is what we're going to do. So since both of these methods will require this, this is what we'll have. Now, the way to provide a per method handler is simply by invoking by method. And you just paste these in here, and you're good to go. So once we restart the application, Thank you. It's still not happy. Let's see what the next problem is.
Okay, I'm failing to see the problem quickly here. So what I'll do is let's pretend that this works for now. We'll come back to it. Uh, but what I want to bring your attention to is the fact that this we should not be doing. Um, the reason is this is a blocking call. So that's really what I wanted to show. <laughs> So if we just make use of, uh, RatPack provides this blocking primitive, basically. That's a nice way to perform blocking actions here. And so if you don't already start with a promise and you don't get access to these blocking operations, you can create a blocking operation by doing this. And of course, blocking returns a promise which will return a promise of the to-dos. So we just have to actually resolve the promise here. That's a very important note here about, this is an important note here about Rappack. So in Rappack promises, none of the work gets ex executed until you actually subscribe to it and you do subscription through then. So if you create this, uh, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen until you actually invoke then. So you can create all the promises that you want, but unless you actually want them, nothing's going to happen. Um, okay, so we'll pretend that this works for now. Uh, what I want to point to your attention to is that you can see that this starts to get pretty long. So what do you do for this? Uh, what we want to do is we'll create a new class here. And we'll just migrate the code. So something I want to draw your attention to is um, when you're working with the registry in Rappack, you can do this. But if you're using Groovy, you can do this. So as long as you provide your type, um, Rappack will pull this from the registry and provide it to you as an argument so that you don't have to get it yourself. So that's, that's quite nice. Um, and if you wanted to use this you know, in a class, this class is called an injection handler. So this is a, a typical handler. It looks like this, right? It's just void handle context. Injection handler will actually analyze your arguments and do the same kind of thing that it's doing here. So this is required, of course. And this is the handling context. And we just want our data source here. So we're going to see a few things here if we enable compile static. Uh, basically, it's complaining. <laughs> so in Groovy, you have nice, um, you have nice uh, delegate resolution here within the, within the util, um, within the closure, I mean. Uh, but we don't have such a thing here. And I actually just opened up a ticket for this because it would be really nice to have this. So if you come to the Rat Pack project, navigate to issues and look for good first contributions. We have plenty of tickets. If you're interested in helping out, you can come in and say, oh, hey, Dan, I'd love to uh, work on this. And we'll talk about it. And, and we'll have, in the, for the next presentation, this will look much better. So what do we have to do here? These typically get executed against context. This is a context method. And here, we just need to make sure that we're running against This is, this is a detail, but it's called the by method spec. So we have that. We just have to come back in. That's always nice, right? Uh, 
just a few more times. And that's it. So we're able to extract our handler logic to a, a class, and we have to bring it back in somehow. So the way that we do this is, you just instantiate it here. So if we were to restart this application, by the way, the reason I'm not using Gradle continuous mode here is, um, yeah, fine. The reason that I'm doing this is because H2 has a hard time finding this file relative to the class path. So uh, when you're using continuous mode, again, you probably will use a more, um, a more real solution, like a database migration library or something like that, so you wouldn't have to keep doing this. But just to show that we can still respond to this and get our empty array, uh, empty list here, that works. So this is kind of the typical cadence that you'd go through in developing Rat Pack applications, is that you will kind of scratch something out here, right? You'll start by saying, hey, get, you know, I have to do something in here. And once you have a logical unit of method handling, you'll typically migrate to something and um, migrate into a handler and then register it back in here. When these handlers start to get too long, you can actually create whole chains of them and pull these logical units of chains in into your main chain. So just to show you how to do that, we have groovy action, chain action, that's right. So this allows you, so what's nice about Rat Pack Groovy is that um, we have things that allow you to compile statically while maintaining like this kind of experience that we've seen so far so that you don't have to do all this explicit naming. And so that's why I want something like a Groovy injection handler. So if anybody's interested in contributing that, I would be very grateful. But here we can simply do this, come back here, and we can just insert now this new to-do chain. Oop. Yeah. So we can abstract out our individual handlers or groups of handlers into something like this. And then when those handlers get to be too long, we can put them in a chain. And so you can really start to partition your application into coherent and logical groups of um, areas of concern and still maintain a readable, um, a readable root handler, as you can see here, uh, all while making use of um, fast feedback and things like this. So this is, this is the typical kind of uh, cadence that you would go through in working with uh, Rat Pack. I just want to show you a finished product. So by the way, um, the code goes, uh, my notes go into deeper detail around how would you do um, handler de delegation and things like this. And final product looks, looks something like this. Um, so as an implementation detail for to do backend, we just have to set some headers here to make sure that you can do cores enabled stuff. Um, and yeah, so things look pretty typical. Uh, we have we have a handler for handling uh, CRUD operations against you know the root path, and then we have CRUD operations against an individual path. So you feel free to come in here and take a look around and and get a feel for uh, the evolution. This project is also organized into individual subprojects that show the progression as you would go through uh, evolution of your Rat Pack application. And actually, the link is in my notes. So if you come to the very bottom, um, we can see that the specifications pass. So I'm, I deployed this application to Heroku, free, free dyno instance, so it's sleeping when it's idle. So we have to take some time for it to wake up. But once it wakes up, yeah, once it wakes up, you can see that, that all the specifications pass. So our application satisfies 
specifications for this project. And if you switch this to client, um, we can actually interact with our Rat Pack application that we've deployed. So, so we can see that we've interacted with this using this UI. And when you query against this in general, you can see you can see our response here. So we've attended GreatConf, and we've also we've done that. So I'll take your questions now. No questions? If you don't have questions, I do have plenty of Rat Pack stickers <laughs> so that you can tell your friends that you know what's up. No questions? Yes? Sure, so for those of you who are following, um, Rat Pack 1.4 should be released soon. I don't have a solid date yet, but two big things that are coming in. Um, so I didn't get into it today, but our asynchronous framework is asynchronous, but it's also deterministic. And I talk about this in my notes. Um, specifically under the asynchronous programming section. So I have links here that link to Luke Daly, who's the project lead. Um, he has a, a series of articles that explains how he achieved this, and the most important part of Rat Pack, which is the execution model. Um, and so people come in expecting to be able to run things in parallel, and you can do that today. There's just no sugar around it. Um, so one four will have uh, parallel execution as, as a top-level API. And uh, we'll also have retrofit um, integration. So that was done by John Engelman, who you may know, who wrote, who is the author of the Shadow plugin for Gradle. Um, so you can provide POJOs that map to endpoints, and you can, you can use those. So we have retrofit and parallel async execution coming down for 1.4. For 2.0, there are a lot of things that we'd like to do. Um, one of them is separating the execution model from the core Rat Pack server so that you can just use it on its own. There's a lot of value in that. Um, for me personally, I would like to see HTTP2 in and, and tying that into our execution model. So HTTP2 allows for asynchronous push and pull between client and server. Um, I would also like to do thrift and protobuf over HTTP. So that you can, um, so that you can interface with other RPC clients, maybe like gRPC or something like that. So, for 2.0, this is what I'm thinking, or maybe even in the 1.0 branch. But um, that's kind of, I think that's kind of what we're looking at in the near and distant futures. Yes. That's, that's correct. Yes, so the Rat Pack libraries are written in Java 8. The Rat Pack Groovy artifact that we're using today is written in Groovy. And it, it's, it's really just um, closure util and, and delegation strategies that we have there that make it work really nice. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely correct. So um, there's someone from Kaleidos who has written a closure kind of a more opinionated closure framework on top of Rat Pack. So there's that. You could also just use plain closure. Um, if you navigate to our GitHub page, we actually have many examples in different JVM languages. Um, one of them being Kotlin, of course. Uh, but yes, yeah, so you can do this in Java, Groovy. You can even you can do it in Scala. It, um, we don't have any of... Uh, we don't have any kind of adapters that kind of make it easy to applying Scala functions, but you could, you could do that if you wanted to. Yes? Yeah, no, um, it's fairly easy, and that's actually how I accidentally ended up working on Rat Pack. So I just, I just wanted to try a demo, and it, I'm on Windows, and it wasn't working. So I said, hey, this isn't working on Windows. Um, we talked through it, and I figured out what was happening. And you just, start, you just start somewhere. So as an example, 
if we come into the issues page, uh, again, I, I do recommend coming in and looking at good first contributions. Um, so as an example, you can come up in here and say, hey, um, I would like to work on this. What does it entail? And Luke Daly also works at Gradle. So he's, the Rat Pack project is built in such a way that you can run all the tests and make sure that your changes work. Is that, was that the question that you had? Yes, so Rat Pack's cool, right? It's asynchronous, non-blocking, reactive, whatever. What I like to focus on is developer friendliness. So that's um, how easy it is to prototype and maintain code over time. And a part of developer friendliness, of course, is IDE support, things like um, fast compilation times, fast startup times. And of course, as a part of that, good testing. And so for every feature that we have in Rat Pack, whether that's asynchronous programming, whether that's handlers or testing chains, um, we provide fixtures at around nearly every feature of Rat Pack that allows you to easily do unit testing, integration testing, or full-on functional testing. And I actually gave a, a talk last month in Greech about this very topic, and I'll be talking about it again in GreatConf, so in GreatConf US in July. But yeah, um, I, I have notes available in my GitHub. Um, if you're interested in this. Yeah, so you can just come in here and take a look at, take a look at what we've done. Uh, all the code is available as well. So if you're interested um, in looking at test testability of Rat Pack applications, you can come in. I go through everything from handler testing to asynchronous testing to full-on application testing. Yes. Any more questions? Yes. Yeah, there are, there are so many. Uh, the, the ones that I tend to focus on, again, are developer friendliness. Um, if you want to look at some benchmarks, Dan Woods has a couple of unscientific benchmarks where he runs work two as a, as a load generator against Rat Pack. And he ran it against, I think, like a C8 extra large or something like that on AWS. And the performance is quite amazing. Um, Netty's great. Netty with ePoll is even better. And it's, the performance is amazing. The thing about asynchronous programming, anybody can do it, but to debugging it is difficult. And the way Rat Pack manages asynchronous execution makes it deterministic, which means it makes it easier to follow your asynchronous flow. So really, it's about performance as well as making it easy to understand what's going on. Um, in terms of selling it, there, there's another point of view, which is money, uh, cost of resources. So if you're on some kind of cloud provider, you're paying for the resources that you use. Rat Pack minimizes the number of resources that you need. So unlike a servlet container where you have a thread per request in a, some kind of thread pool, and in order to get more throughput, you make the thread pool larger, right? And that doesn't come for free. Um, in Rat Pack, we're using Netty, so the number of threads that we spawn by default is number of cores times two. That's just, that's just from, Rat, um, from Netty, but that's tunable as well. And the framework itself minimizes the memory footprint that it needs. So because we don't have many threads, and because the, the, app, uh, the framework itself doesn't have much of a call stack, um, we really minimize utilization on CPU and memory. So a single, as an example, so ratpack.io, this is running on Heroku on, on the lowest tier thing. It's because it's so cheap, but this handles everything quite well in such a constrained space. So you can, um, you can take all the money that you save and, I don't know, hire another developer or something like that, and maybe go for beers, I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, there's so many facets. It's, it's fast, it's nice to develop in, it's good for prototyping, it's, uh, it's light on resources. I mean, take your pick. <laughs> I don't know how you wanna, I don't know what else you need to sell it to your managers. All right, thank you.
Again, please uh, feel free to come down, take as many stickers as you'd like.